Good morning. So we're going to travel today. And I did this pre-recording for you guys um, because I have a house full today. And I wanted to make sure that I brought attention to a missing child today. But we're going to travel to England today. So this is the disappearance of Jeanette Tate who's a missing person case in which a 13-year-old girl disappeared while delivering in newspapers in Aylbert, Devon, England on August 9th, 1978. Despite extensive searches, Tate's body has not been found and the case of her disappearance remains unknown. The case of Britain's longest missing inquiries and has been described as a murder investigation by Devon and Cornwall Police. Tate's disappearance remains one of Britain's best known missing person cases. In Jeanette Lewis Tate's early life, she was born in Taunton, Somerset, on May 5, 1965. She was the only child born to John and Sheila Tate at the time of Jeanette's birth. The Tate family lived in the Taunton suburb of the wetlands. Wetlands. They relocated to Cornwall before moving to Devon. Jeanette's parents separated when she was young and her father remarried. She lived with her father, stepmother, Violet, and stepsister, Tanya, at Barton Farm Cottages <clears throat> in the East Village, Aylesbury, eight miles, 13 km east of Exeter. After her parents' separation, Jeanette maintained regular contact with her mother. Tate disappeared while delivering newspapers shortly after 3.30 p.m. On Saturday, <clears throat> August 19, 1978, at approximately 3.28 p.m., her school friend saw Tate walking along within, within lane, pushing her bicycle Bicycle Tate had delivered 14 newspapers by this point and conversed briefly with her friends, so they ascended the lane at the top of the hill. Tate mounted her bicycle and rode ahead as her friends paused to read an article in the newspaper they had been given. She would typically have performed this newspaper around and had agreed to do this, the job for one week as the paper, the paper boy who normally did, did the round was on holiday. Holiday would be vacation in England. Tate was wearing a white cotton t-shirt with her name embroidered in red letters on the left shoulder, light brown trousers and white plimsolls. <clears throat> Seven months later, the two girls discovered Tate's bicycle lying in the middle of the road. Several newspapers she had been scheduled to deliver were scattered across the tarmac. Approximately 25 minutes after the discovery, Tate's parents returned to Barton Farm Cottage it, from a shopping trip to Exeter. The girls had Tate's bicycle with them and asked if she was at home. When Tate's father said that his daughter was not at home, he and her mother, assisted by several friends and neighbors, began a search around within Wilton Road for Tate at 5 p.m. John Tate reported his daughter missing to Devon in Cornwall Police. Within hours of Tate's disappearance, Police Mountain 
about it in extensive search. Seventy uniformed policemen and fifty detectives from Devon and Cornwall Police, assisted by mountain officers from Avon and Somerset Police, was assigned to the search. All ponds in the Aylesbury area were searched by water. Search units and search dogs assisted police in their search of the surrounding terrain. Devon and Cornwall Police discounted the possibility of Tate running away from home. As at the time of her disappearance, she had no personal possessions beyond the clothing she was wearing. She had also left behind in her bedroom money she had been saving for for an upcoming family holiday. The money collected from the customers on her newspaper round was still in her purse on the bicycle. The possibility of a hit-and-run traffic accident was also ruled out as no tire marks were found on the road and her bicycle was undamaged. Kidnapping was initially considered a possibility. Although both Devon and Cornwall Police, Tate's family gradually discounted the possibility. Eyewitnesses reported seeing a maroon triumph or similar vehicle upon Wilton Road. At around the same time of the disappearance, and police issued a photo fit picture of a man they wanted to question in relation to the incident. This man was described as being a very handsome individual in his early 20s with a pale complexion, short dark hair, who had been wearing a light colored shirt. Despite the police investigation and, and a search of the surrounding countryside involving thousands of volunteers, Tate's disappearance remains unexplained in 2002. DNA belonging to Tate was found on one of her jumpers kept by her mother, which would allow her body to be identified if discovered. On the 25th anniversary of the case of in 2003, Jeanette's parents both stated their belief that she is no longer alive. <clears throat> Police have amassed more than 20,000 index cards in a filing system related to the case, which is stored at the Devon and Cornwall Police Headquarters in Exeter. Robert Black was the prime suspect. Robert Black is a serial killer convicted in 1994 to similar crimes involving the abduction and murder of young girls, was questioned by Devon and Cornwall Police in connection with the Tate case. The course of his job as a long-distance delivery van driver in the 1970s Black had made deliveries in the Exeter area in 1996. <clears throat> An eyewitness claimed to have seen a vehicle of the model Black. Is, Black is known to have driven in 1978 a, at Exeter Airport on the day of Jeanette's disappearance. The police inquiries were unable to establish that Black had been Aylesburg, in Aylesbury on the day of the disappearance. The Crown Prosecution Services decided on August 2008 that the insufficient evidence existed to charge Black with Tate's murder. After Black's conviction in 2011 for the murder of Jennifer Carty in 1981, a spokesman for the police service of Northern Ireland commented on the striking similarities between the murder of Cardi and the disappearance of Tate. Devon and Cornwall Police reviewed the case in June 2014 in the hope of finding sufficient real evidence of pro to prosecute Black. At the time of his death in January 2016, Devon and Cornwall Police were five weeks from submitting a file to the Crown Prosecution Service in which they sought a new decision on whether to prosecute him. The file was submitted 
in April 2016 in the Crown Prosecution Service said that due to Black's death, there would be no posthumous decision to charge him with Tate's murder. In August 2018, on the eve of the 40th anniversary of his daughter's disappearance, John Tate made a further plea for information about the case, saying, I am not even 100% sure Black did it. I need proof that Black killed her. He said that his rapidly declining health meant that he could no longer make his annual trip from Manchester to Aylesburg and that his final wish was to give his daughter a dignified Christian burial and to be buried alongside her. He died in April 2020, age 77, with the case still unsolved. So that is the story of Jeanette Tate, who remains missing. And she is from England. If you are from England and you have any information on her, please call the local authorities. Thank you for hearing Jeanette Tate's story, and you guys have a great day. Love you all.